All right, hello autoimmune warriors. I'm Dr. Eric Osansky, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the role of a leaky gut in autoimmunity, and I'll also discuss whether or not everyone with an autoimmune condition should test for a leaky gut. Now, speaking of testing, the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions better understand the test results so that they can find or remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. So once a week, I release a video that focuses on testing, but what I've decided to do is create another weekly video that dives deeper into the potential triggers and underlying imbalances that I'll be covering on these test tutorial videos. Before talking about the role of a leaky gut in autoimmunity, I like to briefly discuss what a leaky gut is. So a leaky gut is when the intestinal barrier is compromised. Normally, the cells in the intestine are held together by tight junctions, and they prevent larger substances such as proteins, bacteria, and other substances from passing through and going into the bloodstream. But when someone has a leaky gut, these larger molecules can now pass through the intestinal wall and thus go into the bloodstream where they're not supposed to be. So the immune system sees these molecules as being foreign, and as a result, an immune system response occurs, thus resulting in inflammation. And this potentially can trigger an autoimmune response. All right, so what's the relationship between a leaky gut and autoimmunity? Well, there's something called the triad of autoimmunity. And so this triad, of course, there's three components. Uh, number one, the first component is a genetic predisposition. And you can't change your genes, but fortunately, genetics is the most important factor in the development of an autoimmune condition. The second and third components of the triad are even more important. So component number two of the triad of autoimmunity is exposure to environmental trigger. and then Component number three of the triad is an increase in intestinal permeability, which is the medical term for a leaky gut. And that's the role that a leaky gut plays in autoimmunity, is that if you have a leaky gut, this doesn't guarantee that autoimmunity will develop. But if you have all three of those components, you have that genetic predisposition, exposure to environmental trigger, and a leaky gut, then there's a good chance that one or more autoimmune conditions will develop. Let's talk a little bit about treatment options for a leaky gut. You, of course, want to address the cause of the leaky gut, which might sound like common sense, but you'd be surprised how many people start care with me and they're already taking formulations to repair their gut or they're drinking bone broth, which is great. I'm not saying anything bad about this. When someone is drinking bone broth or if they're vegan, vegetarian, they're drinking, let's say, cabbage juice or eating fermented foods for gut healing, or even if they're taking L glutamine, I mean, these aren't bad things, but a lot of these people aren't addressing the cause of the leaky gut, either because they just don't think of it, or it's a challenge to find the cause of the leaky gut. So some people try to address it through diet. So there are a lot of people who make dietary changes on their own, and admittedly, gluten, dairy, or other food allergens can cause a leaky gut. But let's talk about something called a 5R protocol. So according to the 5R protocol, there are five, so I mentioned the triad of autoimmunity, which are three components. So the 5R protocol, of course, there's five components, and this relates to a leaky gut. It can relate to other, other things, to other imbalances as well. But with regards to leaky gut, um, component number one is to remove the factor that's causing the leaky gut. So again, if it is a dietary factor, a, a food allergen such as gluten or dairy, obviously you want to remove those factors. But there could be other factors as well. There could be SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That can cause a leaky gut. Uh, there can be an infection, such as H. Py so SIBO is not really an infection. It's good bacteria in the wrong place. But H. pylori is an infection. Um, parasites or parasites can cause a leaky gut. So there are a number of different factors that can lead to a, a leaky gut. And of course, you want to remove. You want to re remove those factors. And then number two, the second component of the 5R protocol is replace. So if you're deficient in digestive enzymes, for example, then you might want to take a digestive enzyme supplement. If you have low stomach acid levels, then you might want to take betaine HCL with pepsin or maybe drink apple cider vinegar. Uh, component number three, re-inoculate. And of course, we do that by eating prebiotic foods or taking prebiotic supplements or both, or taking probiotic supplements or eating probiotic foods or both, such as sauerkraut is an example of probiotic food. And then we get into repair. So I mentioned before, you could do it through foods such as drinking bone broth or cabbage juice, fermented vegetables. 
Um, or you could take something like L-glutamine. There's other gut healing agents, marshmallow roots, a slippery elm. These support the gut mucosa. And then the fifth component of the 5R protocol is rebalance, uh, rebalance the adrenals through stress management, getting proper sleep, uh, rebalancing the parasympathetic nervous system, which relates to balancing the, the adrenals and getting sufficient sleep. So how long does it take to heal a leaky gut? Well, you'll hear me say this with everything. <laughs> it depends. It, 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 you know, so if you remove the factor, so let's, let's give an example. Let's say gluten is the factor that causes a leaky gut. So easy enough to remove gluten, or for some people it might not be easy, but really it is easy. You could just, I mean, if someone has an infection, it's, it's not like you could get rid of the infection the next day necessarily. So, I mean, maybe sometimes you can, but, but if, if you're eating gluten and if that's, the, if that's the main problem, if that's causing a leaky gut, then you could give up gluten right away. However, in some people, the inflammatory process associated with gluten could last a number of months. I mean, usually it does last. It's not like with most people, you just stop eating the food and the inflammation is gone instantaneously. It usually does take some time and some people could take a few weeks and some people could take a few months. So even when you can remove the, the trigger right away that's causing the leaky gut, it, it usually will take some time. And then of course, if you have something like an infection, like H. pylori or a parasite, it's minimum you're looking at one to two months usually at least a couple of months, especially with like H. pylori. And we'll talk about following more of a, an alternative protocol. If you're taking an antibiotic, that'll be much quicker. The, the downside is that you're disrupting the gut flora and, and increasing the permeability of the gut further, but you are getting rid of the pathogen quicker. But if you're taking more of a natural approach, then you're looking at at least two to four months usually to get rid of pathogens hopefully more on the two month side, but even if it's two months and it, get, it might still, and, and usually will take time for the inflammation to resolve. So again, you're probably looking at a, at least two to six months, let's say, uh, to heal the gut, sometimes longer. Uh, again, it, it does, as I mentioned, depend on the person though. So should you test for a leaky gut? Well, in the past, I used to test many of my patients, if not most of my patients for a leaky gut, I used a test called the Intestinal Permeability Antigenic Screen or the Ray Number 2 from the company Cyrex Labs. And, and I think it's a really good test. The reason I stopped using it, I mean, the main reason is, I guess there's a few reasons. And of course, I, I do like to test, but I'm, I also try to be conservative with the test just because you have to draw the line somewhere. So I do try to recommend the most important test. And to me, the testing for a leaky gut it does have value. It's great to get a baseline reading and then confirm you have a leaky gut. And then in the future, some people will choose to retest and see if the gut is healed. But the way I look at it is, is when I was doing the testing, most people tested positive on the ray number two. And there's also a marker called secretory IgA that I've spoken about in other videos. And secretory IgA, it's not a leaky gut marker, but when that's low, usually someone has a leaky gut and and that some of the testing I normally do, like if I do an adrenal saliva test, the company I use looks at secretory IgA or most comprehensive stool panels, or at least many, the ones I'm familiar with, test for secretory IgA. So you can look at it that way and, and rely on that marker, at least for the initial reading. And again, you might want to do a retest. Some people won't want to do retests, but point is I assume my patients have a leaky gut. So even with that, even if they didn't get that mark of the secretory IgA, I just assume someone has a leaky gut. If they, if they really want to get a leaky gut test done, I have no problems with that. But what I do is I assume they have a leaky gut and then I support the leaky gut. And speak of a leaky gut, the next video, I'll be talking more about leaky gut testing. So I've already spoken a few minutes more than I plan to, but I'll get into greater detail. But point is, I don't test everybody for a leaky gut. In the next video, I'll talk about the different leaky gut options, leaky gut test options, I should say. But as far as how to tell if the gut has been healed, that's a question people have. If you don't do testing, how do you know, A, how do you know someone has a leaky gut? And B, how do you know that the gut has been healed? So like I said, I just assume someone has a leaky gut. And if they don't have a leaky gut, it's not going to hurt to support the gut. And I think it's safe to say that most people have a less than optimal gut microbiome, even if they don't have a leaky gut. 
But as far as how to determine if the gut's been healed, if everything else is improved, the symptoms are gone, we'll talk about autoimmunity. So if autoantibodies are normalized, if other test results look good and hopefully are normal. So those are the signs I look for. Again, I'm not opposed to do, doing leaky gut testing and definitely be on the lookout for my next video where we'll discuss the different testing options for a leaky gut. And if you have any questions related to leaky gut syndrome, please post them below and I'll catch you in the next video.